Welcome to Let's Talk. Here we will focus on the hustle, the juggle, and everyday struggle of small business. About their everyday struggles, stresses, and ways they have been able to overcome the challenges of running their business. We welcome questions and comments, so please feel free to email us at admin at plemonscpa.com. We hope you enjoy, and above all, we hope it helps. Well, welcome to the Hustle, Juggle, and Struggle of Small Business. I am your hostess, Thalia Williams. We are proudly sponsored by Pontum Financial, connecting your financial dots. Today in the studio, we have Mr. Larry A. Hobbs, who is going to talk about HR subject. So today we're going to be talking about leadership development for managers, supervisors, department heads, office managers, professionals, executives, and owners. Welcome, Larry. Thank you very much, uh, Thalia, for inviting me again. Uh, I look forward to sharing some information with uh, you and our listeners regarding uh, leadership. Well, let's talk about, let's dive into what's leadership. I mean, you can have anybody who says I'm a manager or a boss, but really what is leadership? Uh, leadership is uh, something that it seems that uh, every organization, uh, nonprofits, uh, the military, the government, uh, big companies, small companies, they always talk about uh, we want leadership, we need leadership. And yet it's something that we don't really teach in school until you're studying uh, for a bachelor's or a master's degree, and then you might get a course or two on leadership. Uh, but uh, parents don't really uh, have classes for children. What we found out, and I've studied this in my MBA program and uh, was interested in this, uh, leadership, first of all, always involves followership. Mm. You're not really a leader unless you have followers. Uh, that's confusing, conflicting for some people. They say, well, leaders show initiative. Well, if you if you wake up and you decide to undertake a task or a job that needs to be done and you do it yourself, that's great initiative and that's appreciated uh, by the organization, but it's not leadership. Mm. Uh, I brought a, a couple of definitions of leadership. I'll just uh, read one of those to you. Uh, leadership is a social influence process in which the leader seeks the voluntary participation of subordinates in an effort to reach organizational objectives. And <clears throat> that's a mouthful, but if you go back, you could you could practically analyze every word. It, it is uh, a social influence, so it always involves two or more people, meaning social. And of course, the influence is when you try to uh, persuade someone else to do something that you would like to see done. Mm, big difference because you can have a manager who has the title of manager, but if he has a crew or she has a crew that's up under them that are refusing to follow them because of whatever, they're not necessarily a leader. They're just a manager and title only, correct? Uh, yes, that, that brings up uh, an important uh, difference in, in uh, uh, different ways to influence people. And, of course, you have formal leadership and informal leadership. And the formal leadership is when you draw the organization chart with the, the lines and the dotted lines and the departments and the different levels in the organization. And, and people who are hired into those positions, uh, they have formal leadership responsibility. They're over a group of people because their boss said, you're over this group of people. Now, the real task is to get those people to follow you happily, gladly, willingly, and to understand that the organization's goals are your goals and their goals. And uh, that's not always the case. Undoubtedly. So talk about, let's talk about defining leadership. How do you define it? You know, you have to have a follower, obviously, but what else? What other characteristics are needed in leadership? Uh, leaders uh, tend to have 
uh, uh, four or five things. A lot of research studies have have revealed that leaders have certain characteristics. A, a long list of those is intelligence. They have a need to achieve. It's called achievement needs. Uh, they tend to have a little more physical size than their followers. Uh, they're energetic. They're knowledgeable. Uh, they're usually uh, a little more knowledgeable than those that are following. They have courage. They tend to have good looks, believe it or not. They have to have integrity in order to influence people that believe you and can trust you. Uh, they generally have fluency of speech. Uh, because they have to communicate to other people. And Imagination. be persuasive. Uh, yeah, this persuasion. And there's many, many different ways of persuasion. But if you, if you take about 15 characteristics or traits of leaders and you boil them down, there's really five characteristics that almost all leaders have to have. One is they have to have a little more intelligence than the group they're leading doesn't say how high their intelligence is, but they have a little more intelligence or knowledge than the group they're leading. Uh, they have some scholarship. They usually have a little more education. Uh, so, uh, they're very dependable, maybe more dependable than those that are the followers. They have activity and social participation. They're not the shy type. The You know, if you've heard of personality A and personality B, well, the personality B is shy, introvert, uh, keeps to themselves. Uh, they have trouble with leadership because they don't like being in the public eye. And uh, then the leader also, the fifth thing, is they have some socioeconomic status slightly above those that they are leading. So let's talk about some of the traits that leaders have because sometimes some leaders are more people focused other leaders are more task focused so let's talk about the difference between the two and how can they be beneficial or even some detriments to those styles well there's a place for both people oriented leaders and task oriented leaders and the people oriented leaders are people who want their people to be happy Mm -hmm. And sometimes they do that. Uh, we call those country club managers. Ah, interesting. When they live at a country club, you know, you wake up in the morning and you make the big decisions. Uh, am I going to play tennis or golf or go swimming today? It's, it's really uh, – but, but no matter which decision, you're happy. You're satisfied. You're, you've achieved uh, your, your goal in that sense of living at a country club. And country club management style, they're – highly concerned about the the uh, satisfaction of those followers. And sometimes that's to the detriment of getting the job done. Mm -hmm. Now, the other end of the spectrum is the task master who doesn't really care whether you're happy or not, but we have this production to get out or we have uh, th this uh, timeline to meet or we have this product to sell, and what are you wasting time for? Let's get with it. Mm -hmm. And they're goal oriented, and uh, and they uh, they they drive their followers uh, with a heavy hand, uh, without regards to uh, am I being pleasant? Do they like me? Uh, are they happy? Uh, that doesn't matter. They just want to get the task done. And by the way, uh, research studies have shown that about uh, three-fourths of managers and supervisors uh, in corporate America are task-oriented. And the reason they got promoted into those positions, uh, one, maybe they were a, a, a hard worker. They were smart. They worked fast. And they got the job done, and so they were recognized, well, maybe this would be a good supervisor. So they get promoted. Unfortunately, uh, when you stop being a worker, start being a leader, you need some training because uh, uh, a real simple definition of leadership is getting work done through others, mm. not doing it yourself. Mm -hmm. You might share in that task or that work, but it's really getting work done through others is about the shortest and simplest 
uh, definition that I've ever been able to read, uh, getting work done through others. Undoubtedly. Well, you know, when you become, when you're a worker and then you become a supervisor of any sort, you do have to wear a different hat. You do have to change your mindset. And sometimes that's very difficult because if you're used to doing everything yourself or you are so focused on getting the job done that you take it on and all the followers are going to be like, here, you got it, punt. We're going to punt to you. We're just going to sit around twiddle our thumbs and just look at you like you're crazy. Other times that change helps that person become more of a leader. They realize I do have to share the work. I can't do it myself. I'm a firm believer in trust but verify. Uh, we really should teach uh, leadership skills uh, more in corporate America. We promote people without giving them the skill set uh, of how to manage other people. And uh, one of the problems is is called delegation. Um, a, a lot of small business owners, uh, they have the attitude, you know, if I just do this myself, it'll be done on time. It'll be done right the first time. There won't be any uh, loss or, or uh, spills and uh, <clears throat> the customer will be 100 percent. So I'll just do it myself. The trouble with lack of delegation is you get really exhausted and tired. True enough. And so if you're going to grow your company or your organization, profit, nonprofit, whatever it is, uh, you're going to have to rely on other people to help you. And that's where management or in this case leadership comes into it. You have to learn to trust others enough to give them those responsibilities, and we call that delegation. And uh, a lot of people get burned out because uh, they don't know how to delegate. And that's usually the biggest challenge with small business owners. You know, they've been doing it by themselves for so long, but then they plateau or they hit a ceiling and they're trying to discern or figure out, am I ready to hire someone yet? And if I do, what will happen with my bottom line? But then they don't realize they can grow by hiring that person, because usually it's a financial challenge. You know, will I have enough business to support this person? And that becomes their bane, so to speak. When you study uh, entrepreneurship, only certain people have that entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, they're risk takers. They're willing to uh, to invest their time, their money, their resources, uh, and they, and they see a future in this this route that they're that they're taking off on and uh, a, a lot of people do not have the entrepreneurial spirit and so uh, you've mentioned uh, those people can get burned out it's because they work really hard when you start a new business you can just plan on all of your resources and uh, 60 to 70 hours a week of dedication easily, yeah, and then and then eventually you'll after you've hired your your family and your friends, then you're going to have to get a little bigger than than six people and start trusting outsiders and strangers, and uh, that's where the leadership and the delegation uh, becomes a little more difficult. So let's talk about authority and let's talk about titles because we've bantered around with supervisors and managers and things, department heads. So let's talk about authority because that's usually a challenge. Also, how much authority do you give someone in your organization? You know, and that title, does that title equate with authority? Well, there's an old saying that uh, uh, banks are notorious for giving big titles and small salaries. Mm. Uh, you can be the uh, executive assistant of the branch manager, but you, you're really an administrative assistant. Mm -hmm. um, not making fun of banks. It's just an old saying. Uh, let's talk about this authority. There's many different levels of authority or power. And uh, just to name a few, I'll just throw a few words out, and these all have different connotations. Uh, authority is that formal leadership that I that I mentioned a few moments ago. And that's where, uh, for instance, in the military, you have a certain rank. And that rank, regardless of your skills, that rank gives you uh, legal authority over people who have lower rank. Now, it doesn't mean those people like you. 
doesn't mean they're going to do everything you want them to do. It doesn't mean that you're a good leader. It just means that you have a certain kind of authority. And another word that we use is power. And power is the ability to influence others to a certain cause or to a certain behavior. And, of course, another word we use is command. Now, in the corporate world, we don't use the word command, but in the military world or the government world, they use that word command. Uh, I'm giving you an order. Uh, that is, you have to do it. Whether you like it or not. Yes, and, and even in the corporate world, I've joked before that uh, that I wish I had the authority to put a certain employee in jail like they do in the military. If you refuse to follow a command in the military, they can call the military police and they can put you in the military jail and uh, because you refuse to follow instructions. And I think we've all worked with people in the corporate world that uh, we wish they were in jail because they're not very useful. Uh, but we, uh, we don't use this kind of authority. Uh, we use more of an influence. And then uh, uh, there's a lot of other words. Let me just give you a few words, and some of them are a lot softer. Uh, for one thing... We direct people. Mm -hmm. Another is recommend. Another is training. Mm -hmm. What are you doing when you're training? You're influencing them to uh, receive the training and change their behavior into using that training. Mm -hmm. You also have the ability when you have authority to help people understand sometimes why you're doing what you're doing. And for some folks, understanding the why behind it motivates them to want to do it. Now, you can't tell everybody why for every instruction you give them, but if you give them enough to help them better understand what you're asking can be impactful to the end goal. Yes, and back to the people-oriented leadership and the task oriented. Uh, what you've just described uh, tends to be a little more on the people oriented. You want them to understand. You want them to agree. Uh, you want them to be satisfied. And you want to answer all their questions. But I've made up some, uh, some scenarios over the years that I use in uh, leadership development training. And uh, speaking of uh, uh, being a democratic type leader and wanting everyone to agree let's say that you're in a you're in a meeting room and the meeting is going along and you're the leader of the meeting and all of a sudden a thick black smoke starts pouring out of the air conditioning and heating vent now you want a people oriented leader who says my my look at this black thick smoke we should discuss this and then we should come up with some alternatives on what to do. And then we should vote on it, what we're going to do. Is no. that the leader you want? No, I want to action oriented leader. Let's get the heck out of Dodge. You want the task-oriented manager who says, you open the door. You call the, EMS call or the authorities. The rest of you get in a line and quickly exit the room. You want someone who's giving orders to mm -hmm. you, and you're willing to follow them mm -hmm. because you want that task-oriented leader in that case. So it's just an example I've made up that makes the point of the difference between the people-oriented, the, the democratic uh, style of leadership and the task-oriented. And, you know, um, I, f I finally uh, pulled up my uh, my computer, and when you – try to influence other people, there's a dozen different words of different levels of authority. Of course, we talked about commandments and orders, and then we talked about instructions. But look at these words, requests, coordinate, organize, synchronize, harmonize, bring together, arrange, sort out, put in order, standardize, administer, handle, 
preside over or oversee. And these are softer words and these are softer styles of management where you're uh, – of leadership where you're persuading people to move in a certain direction but it's with respect. Now, could a and task, soft words. But could a task manager use that style versus a people oriented manager? Could he use some of those or she use some of those words? They probably should. Mm. Instead of just barking all the time mm-hmm. and having an attitude like your anger because they're not meeting their goals uh, of time or productivity or profit or sales or whatever it is. And and so the task-oriented person needs to learn a few more people skills. And the people-oriented uh, leaders need to need to be a little more directive sometimes and uh, point out the goals uh, in a more forceful way. Understandable, because we're looking at or – we're focusing on those small and medium-sized businesses. And some mom and pops know they need to grow, but they are having challenges, maybe even understanding their leadership style because it's only been them and their wife or their spouse or their significant other in running the business for so long. So would a individual who is the owner or in a position of authority to hire would they need to understand their own leadership style or what type of leader they are? Yes, and, and there are uh, uh, what's called personal inventories that you can take uh, to determine where you are on the task people orientation of leadership style. Uh, these can take from uh, 30 minutes to two hours and you answer a set of behavioral type questions. What would you do in this situation? And based on large studies, they compare uh, your answers to the answers of other people who are who have proven leadership. And then you find out uh, your leadership style. And that's uh, very, very useful uh, to do that. Mm-hmm. And uh, but very few people do it. And I think that is the challenge because sometimes they don't know what type of leader they are until they hire someone. And we talked about communication at one point and the communication styles are different with an individual who is people orientated versus task orientated. We talk about the military where they do bark the commands. If I'm a colonel, you better do everything I say that's upon to me because the general above me, I have to do everything he says. Whereas in a corporate environment or a civilian environment, it's not quite that way. And those words that you use can generate more activity and allow people to follow you willingly once you understand your leadership style your communication style, and then understanding how you want to get the best out of the people you work with. Uh, You mentioned a couple of things there that uh, are important. One is when you're the owner of a small business, it gets a little confusing because uh, you have all the authority. Mm -hmm. Hire, fire, financial decisions, pay, uh, scheduling. And so people are a little bit reluctant to buck the boss that is to uh, push back or to fight or to suggest or to criticize. And you have that problem. Uh, you're a little bit shielded even though you're, uh, you're a tyrant. Uh, everyone's afraid to tell you that. And uh, that person uh, can be successful. Uh, I've seen some very successful small business people have a good business making money. But nobody likes them. Mm. But nobody will tell them either. Because mm-hmm. that's their dependency. That, that's, that's their one livelihood. Of the problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the initiatives that leaders that leaders provide uh, is to persuade the followers to gladly accept your goal mm-hmm. as their goal, mm-hmm. and that's the difficulty: is letting them see the goal and uh, believing that uh, that's a goal worthy of their time and effort. So, Chris, tell us about the seven Ds. What are they? Every partnership that starts or every business that starts needs to take into consideration what the seven Ds are. So from the top, it's death, disability, divorce, disinterest, drug addiction, default, divestment. These are some of the most common things that we see hit businesses that cause a massive rift that needs to be taken into consideration on how that business is going to react in the event that one of these happen. 
everything from divestment, which just means you retiring and succession planning, whereas divorce, death, disability, disinterest, if somebody becomes disinterested in the business and wants to go do something else, drug addiction or default. So how are we going to handle those moving forward as business owners? We need to take those into consideration and you need to work with your team to make sure that you're ready if they do come down the way. So, Chris, how can we get a hold of you for more information? Well, our main office is in San Antonio off of 281 and Bitters. We also have a website, pontemfinancial.com, P-O-N-T-E-M financial.com. And we're also on LinkedIn, Facebook. And of course, we have a phone, 210-625-4845 to reach out to a member of my team or myself. Thank you, Chris. Chris Hall is a financial advisor and partner with Pontum Financial in San Antonio, Texas. Securities and advisory services offered through LPL Financial, a registered investment advisor. Member FINRA slash SIPC. Just in your vast knowledge and what you've managed to observe, which do you find to be more impactful? Is it that people or task oriented or does it depend on the industry? Or the product service that's provided. Well, if you draw if you draw a chart with uh, people on the left, a graph and task across the bottom, what you really want is a slope that goes perpendicular right through the middle of the square. Mm-hmm. Where uh, and and the higher you go on that slope, the better your leadership is. In other words, you want to get up to where. Everyone is completely happy and everything gets done on time, under budget, with a profit and with no defects. Mm. And so the leadership can be very low in task or people, but you want to grow both of those at the same time. And uh, uh, the ability to gain consensus and commitment to common objectives is the real problem. Mm. So how does someone overcome that? You know, I, I have a business example that has five employees and I'm looking at making one of those employees a leader or a manager or supervisor. What are some of the traits I should be looking for in that particular person? Well, I've certainly looked for communication skills. I would look for uh, customer service skills I mean, how do they react uh, when they're dealing with uh, other employees or other uh, customers or customers? And you want to get a, a pleasant personality. And then some of those other things I mentioned in that other list, they'll have uh, some intelligence. They'll have speaking ability. Uh, they won't be too shy. They'll be a little bit creative and innovative. And, and they're also willing to talk to you because uh, you don't want to be a micromanager. The micromanager is, or leader is that person who stands right behind you and looks over your shoulder. And I think we've all worked for a micromanager. It's very, very humiliating uh, when people tell you, here's what I want you to do, now go do it. And then they follow you around uh, uh, for a great part of the day. And uh, it it boils down to trust and responsibility and accountability. We both know, Thalia, you and I know people, even young people, that we can give them a task or an assignment and we don't have to worry about it. And we know people that are 60 years old, you give them a task or assignment, you better check up on it. Because it may or may not be done. It may or may not be done correctly. So it's not a matter of age. Uh, It's a matter of uh, responsibility and accountability. And that makes a huge difference. And looking at hiring, not hiring, but taking that person that's in place already in your team that you know knows the business, knows the work, but now you're wanting to reward them with a managerial or a leadership role, the key, I think, also is can they make the transition? And what would you offer a small business in the respect of what can I offer this potential employee who I want to make a leader? What can I offer to make sure he or she is successful? Well, of course, uh, some, some leadership training, and some of that will be by example, they will have seen how hard you work and how you make decisions. I know uh, when I was hired in my first job in 1972 in what was then personnel management, now it's called human resource management, 
the uh, the personnel manager that hired me as an assistant, I was fresh out of college, uh, he put a table, a six-foot table, in front of his desk. And for the first month, I just sat in a chair next to his desk and listened to everything that came through his office, every phone call, every visitor, every decision. And then as soon as they would leave, he would discuss that with me on a confidential basis. Here's what just happened. Here's why it's happened. Here's why I said what I did. Here's why I made the decision. Or here's what the policy says. And I thought that was one of the best trainings uh, that I've ever received. It was a a living training. And I think if you're a small business person, uh, that would be a good way to to tackle that. You would uh, slowly offload some more responsibility onto that person uh, with a promise that uh, there will be more pay mm-hmm. and more time off and more working hours, but it will be more rewarding. Mm, I like that. So define leadership in 10 ways. Let's talk about that. How can you define leadership at least 10 ways? Sure. Well, the, uh, I think we've already talked uh, quite a bit about the formal leadership. It's that title you have, where you are on the org chart, uh, <clears throat> what your rank is, so to speak, in the corporate world. And the informal leadership is probably the most uh, more significant. Informal leadership is the unofficial influence exercised on others. And it usually represents the people's choice. And let me give you an example of, of two different kinds of leadership. We talk about Adolf Hitler. Obviously a leader, uh, a country's president, premier for a while. Uh, but, but how did he lead? Through force. People didn't, he didn't care if you were happy or not. And the consequences were not very good if you were unhappy. And yet you take somebody like, like uh, Martin Luther King. He was never, never voted into any office. He was never hired for a salary in a leadership position, but he was the people's choice. He had something to say, and he influenced people, and 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 he he uh, spoke very highly and often of his vision, his goals. Uh, he even called it a dream, as we know, and millions, and even today, 40, 50 years later, people are still following his vision and his influence. He was the people's choice. And uh, there are a lot of leaders today that uh, that that don't have organizations, uh, don't get a salary, uh, weren't elected to any office. Um, and then we have the opposite. A lot of people have positions and get elected but don't have any leadership. So I think the two biggest distinction is is the formal leadership with the title and the pay, the rank, and the informal leadership where you just have an ability to, to uh, influence other people. And I made up a short story, if we have time about that, to talk about that as an example. Uh, first of all, I, I want to use the word initiative. A lot of people think that leaders show initiative, but let me let me squelch that just a little bit. Let's say that somebody in the neighborhood wakes up in the morning and says, you know, there's a lot of trash on our street out there, and uh, I'm a little bit ashamed of that, and I think that if I went out there and I cleaned up all that trash with a trash bag, our neighborhood would look prettier. So that person goes out and picks up all the trash, does it himself, doesn't delegate it, doesn't tell anybody else. He just does it. That's great initiative, but it's not leadership. Mm -hmm. Remember, leadership takes followership. Mm -hmm. So this same person, man or woman, could wake up and say, you know, I think I'm going to organize a neighborhood cleanup. Yes, there's some initiative to create an organization, but – He's going to get some other people to help him. So what he does is he prints some flyers and delivers them, he and his family, uh, uh, to all the mailboxes and maybe on the bulletin boards. And he says on a certain Saturday from uh, 9 o'clock to noon, 
uh, we're going to have a neighborhood cleanup. And by the way, we need a, uh, a refreshments committee. Uh, we need someone with a couple of pickup trucks to haul off the trash. We need someone uh, to uh, uh, get the trash bags donated because we don't have any money for this. And so this leader takes it upon himself or herself to create something from nothing and to get others and other people in the neighborhood. Now, if they read that bulletin, then we're going to have a trash pickup on a certain upcoming Saturday, and they say, well, I'm not interested in that, and it looks like a useless effort, uh, boom, no leadership because there's no followership. That's true. And so the initiative of doing it yourself, like we talked about the ma and pa shop, mm -hmm. uh, it's not leadership. It's a lot of initiative, a lot of hard work, but do it yourself, no delegation. Mm -hmm. You see these same words pop up. Mm -hmm. and whereas a leadership says, I'm going to organize something and I'm going to get as many people as I can to help. And you know, when people see your vision, they're willing to donate money. They're mm -hmm. willing to donate time. Mm -hmm. They're willing to, uh, to, to work behind the scenes to make this happen. Mm -hmm. And you know, on the day of the actual neighborhood cleanup day, that leader might not actually pick up any trash. They may be too busy coordinating the refreshments and the trash bags and the pickup trucks and uh, making assignments. Uh, you cover two sides of that block and you cover two sides of the uh, uh, of two blocks over. And we're going to expand this, not just my street, but we're going to go six blocks in every direction. And and so it grows, and that's how leadership is. It's it's this uh, power to influence other people to meet a common goal. Wow, that's good stuff. Well, we're going to wrap up now. So, Larry, if you got any last insights, tidbits that you'd like to leave with our audience on leadership? Uh, I do. Uh, one question that I've been asked many times, uh, are there born leaders? Is anyone born with leadership? Mm. I think the answer has to be no. However, I made up a little, a little another little story that's very interesting. Uh, if you stand on a playground, an elementary school playground, and you watch the first, second, and third graders come out to recess, and you just stand there and you observe, pretty soon – you'll see little leaders developed. Some students will rush up to one of those other little students and say, what game are we going to play? And that little leader will say, well, we're going to play this game. And here's what I want each of you to do. And here's the rules of the game. Now let's go play the game. And so it begs the question, I'm sure these little leaders out on the playground, and you can see them, one little leader running and a bunch of other little children following them, they're leaders. They didn't take leadership lessons. Their parents didn't send them to leadership school. They didn't uh, sit by their bed at night and read them leadership college books. And yet, these little children are displaying the definition of leadership. They're influencing others to meet a common goal, and their little followers are happy to follow. And so it begs the question, uh, are, are leaders born or not? Uh, probably not. Most leadership is a matter of circumstance. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you being in the right time and uh, in the right place and having the correct skill uh, to, to influence other people. Undoubtedly. Well, how can someone get a hold of you if they wanted your consulting services or leadership training? How can they get a hold of you? The uh, website uh, is uh, managementresolve, one word, dot com. Uh, my phone is here in San Antonio, Texas, 210-316-4206. And my email is very easy, larry.a.hobbs at gmail.com. And uh, I specialize in helping small employers uh, that don't have uh, human resource departments, don't have training departments, and uh, they're the ones that really need the help. They're so busy running their business, uh, they haven't really paid enough attention to human resource management. 
Undoubtedly. Well, Larry, thank you so much for your time and efforts. We look forward to chatting with you again soon. Thank you, Thalia. Have a great day, y'all. Bye. For more information about any of our guests, or if you have questions and comments, please email us at admin at plemonscpa.com. And don't forget to check out our website, plemonscpa.com, for upcoming events and workshops in San Antonio. David B. Plemons CPA Inc. is providing this podcast as a public service, but it is neither a legal interpretation nor a statement of David B. Plemons CPA Inc. policy. Reference to any specific product or entity does not constitute an endorsement or recommendation by David B. Plemons CPA Inc. The views expressed by guests are their own, and their appearance on the Hustle, Juggle, and Struggle of Small Business podcast does not imply an endorsement of them or their concepts or any entity they represent. Views and opinions expressed by David B. Plemons CPA Inc. employees are those of the employees and do not necessarily reflect the views of David B. Plemons CPA Inc. or any of its officials. You should always consult your own investment advisors, attorneys, and accountants before making any decisions concerning your financial matters. If you have any questions about this disclaimer, please contact our office.